just made a project Python and want to showcase it to the world? Well, in this tutorial, we'll take a look at Streamlit, a library that lets you turn Python scripts into websites in just a few minutes. We will look at how to create a simple page, display data with charts, use different layouts and input elements, and also host it online so that it can be accessed from anywhere. To install it, run the command pip install Streamlit and import it like so. Let's start with creating a simple page with some basic content. Here, I'll create a header and a subheader. For the header, I'll give it a divider, and you can use any of the colors here in the documentation. To run the site locally, use the command streamlit run followed by the file name, which is min.py, and open the link here. The page I have here uses the dark theme based on my system preferences, but the user can manually change it in the settings here as well. We can also add paragraph text using markdown and specify a multi-line string which looks like this. If we save this and reload the page, you can see those changes being applied. Using markdown allows us to style the content even more. For example, we can add lists, bold the text, and add links to the text. We can create links by specifying the text in brackets, with the link in parentheses like so. I'll leave a link below to this guide that outlines how to further customize your text content using Markdown. For images, we can use the st.image function and specify the link to any image online. I'll use this image from Unsplash as an example. Alternatively, to use images that are stored locally, we'll need to install a separate module below using this command and import it like so. Here, I'll display this image I've downloaded in the same folder. From there, we can use the image class from below and open any image to display it. Besides just displaying content, we can also display data. To do this, we need to start with a pandas data frame. As a side note, pandas is a popular data manipulation library in Python, which you can install using this command and importing it like so. You can then copy over the example data frame I've created from this GitHub link. To display it, we use the sc.dataframe function and pass in the data frame. This will display all of our data as a table. Streamlit also allows us to configure the columns to display interactive elements such as charts, images, and checkboxes. For that, we need to use the column configure parameter and specify a dictionary with the column name as a key. For the images column, we will specify the column config to be an image column. Now, the table will display those images from the links we have here. Let's also show a line chart for the profit column using the line chart column config. I'll set the y min parameter to 100 and the y max parameter to 300, which are the limits of the dummy data I've added here. This will show the list of numbers formatted as a line chart. Lastly, for numbers, we can use the number column config to format them. For example, to format the price with a dollar sign, we can do it like so, where the percentage D symbol is a placeholder for the actual value. There are other column configurations you can find from the documentation which I'll link below as well. Aside from tables, we can also summarize the data we have using metrics. Here, we can set the label, value, and delta. If the delta starts with a negative sign, then it'll be red. Otherwise, it'll be green like so. We can also display charts from our data. You can find the example data from this link. Copy it over and make sure to import pandas as well. For example, if we wanted to display a line chart, we can use the line chart function, where we specify the data frame and the names for the x and y axis columns. Streamlit will then use that data to create the chart. We can also specify a list of columns for the y axis value to plot multiple lines. Besides just line charts, Streamlit also provides the same functionality for bar charts, array charts, and scatter plots. For scatter plots, I'll use this data frame here and plot it with the scatter chart function. Besides just specifying the x and y values, we can also indicate a column to control the color and size of the points. This will create the scatter plot over here. Now that we've seen how to create elements on our website, what if we wanted to position them in columns or have different tabs? For that, Streamlit offers a few layouts for us to choose from. To create multiple columns, we can use the columns function and specify the number of columns we need. This returns us all the columns we can use to place elements in. In this case, we have robots being written here. From there, all we need to place elements in those columns is to use the width keyword like so. What this does is to give each element here equal width. I am displaying images here, but you can display any elements within the columns. But what if we wanted to assign them a different percentage of the width? We can do so by passing in a list with different proportions like so. Besides that, we can also store them under different tabs using the tabs function, which works just like adding columns, only now that the elements will be placed in different tabs. The function here expects a list of names of the different tabs to be created. Next, we can make widgets expandable by using the expander function. This expects us to pass in the title of the expander. Using that expander, we can then include the elements that should be placed when the user clicks to expand it. This can be useful if you want to provide additional explanations or descriptions to the content on your site. If you want to make this site interactive, Streamlit also offers multiple input elements. I'll go over how to use the button, checkbox, and text view elements. To create a button, use st.button and specify the text. This returns the true or false value which you can store. Whenever the button has been clicked on, its value will be true. And anytime the user clicks on the button, the script will be run again. So we can use an if statement to check its value to display content conditionally. Now, if we click on the button, the text will be shown. There's also the checkbox widget which can be created like so. 
And just like with the button, we can use the value written by the checkbox to display content conditionally. I've just gone with a simple example here, but you can use this for more complex scenarios such as allowing your users to set options within your application. Lastly, if you want a text input field for users, you can use the text input widget. This will return whatever the user has entered, which I'll just display here. If I enter some example text, press enter and wait for the app to reload, we can see that text being shown here. These are just three of the many input elements Streamlit has to offer, but they all function similarly. I'll leave the link to the documentation where you can find all the input elements that you can use. What makes Streamlit useful is that we can import any other Python libraries such as for machine learning or for making HTTP requests and use them to build our site. This makes it far easier and faster to develop features, especially since you can do everything with just Python code. Streamlit is also highly customizable. There are many built-in widgets like the ones we went over in this video, as well as third-party ones that you can install for specific use cases, whether that is for recording audio, displaying animations, or even a payment system that requires users to pay before entering your site. Once we have the site developed, we can host it on the Streamlit Community Cloud for free. To do this, we'll first need to upload our code to GitHub. If you've never used GitHub before, simply sign up for an account, create a new repository by clicking on this button, give it any name and upload all your code including any additional files or folders, or use Git to push your code. Anytime you update the files on GitHub, your site will also be updated. Once that is done, sign up for an account on Streamlit, connect it with your GitHub account so that Streamlit can access your code, and create a new web by clicking on this button. From there, select your GitHub repository and branch that contains the code, and enter in the file name of your Python file. In my case, it is main.py. You can also customize the link of the website here. Finally, click on deploy and you'll be redirected to the site of the app being hosted by Streamlit that you can access from anywhere. And that's all for this introduction to Streamlit. If you have found this video helpful, you'll probably enjoy watching this video next. Besides that, please consider possibly liking this video and subscribing for more such content.